All right, here we are with our herringbone box and we're ready to start assembling the, the carcass stock, essentially. Um, you've done so far is you have your herringbone pieces. You should have four sets of these, a total of eight individual pieces all together. And uh, back in one of the earlier videos, we actually labeled the pieces of our box. So I've got this all set up right now. If we pull this apart a little bit, I'm gonna go over here to my scrap. And since I don't have a locker, I'm keeping everything in this box here. So we made our practice pieces here. So I've got this front piece essentially is gonna be right here with the herring bones down the center and the center piece. So that'll be right here on the box. And then I've got the right and left half of the front. And then over here, I've got the right side of the box, which is gonna have nothing. And you can see right here when we're done, we're gonna split this into the two miter pieces. Over here, we have the left side. And again, right here, there'll be a miter split. And then over here, we'll have the back piece and one more miter split right here. So the back of the box will look just like the front with the two herring bones in the middle. We'll set these aside for now. We're gonna use these later when we start doing our rabbit and dado cuts. All right, what we wanna do is we wanna make one big long stock piece out of this. Once this is glued up and cured, we'll run the whole thing through the planer, take it down to three quarters of an inch, and then we will table saw, joint and table saw this down to three and three eighths. But first we have to glue this into one solid piece. Before we start, I have everything laid out. I'm gonna do a quick double check. I'm looking for gaps, anything that might not want to go together. And I see right here, there's a little bit of movement. So this is gonna be a really tricky one. I think I'm gonna just take a, just a touch on the sander with that, just to make sure. I think I'm gonna check it with my straight edge. Make sure it really is that piece. And it is actually no. What's happened is this piece after I've glued it has become slightly concave. So once I clamp that in, it's actually gonna straighten that out just the little bit that it needs. And looks like the same thing there. Another thing I can do is I can take a piece of sandpaper, put it on a flat surface, and just sand that along that, just, just enough to flatten that out. Okay, when I glue this, I need to have a couple things ready. Right off the bat, I need to make sure I have at least two bar clamps that will be long enough to handle this entire length, and also a straight edge. You can either use a long one that's a full length, or also just a shorter one that will, we can do this one section at a time. Um, in fact, let's get a shorter one right now, just because once this is in the bar clamps, this will be hard to manipulate. Okay. Got my combination square. I'm gonna go ahead and do the forbidden right now and I'm gonna take that apart and use just that part of the straight edge. All right, my bar clamps are set up. Got my type one glue. I'm gonna go ahead and glue all the surfaces. This will be a tricky one. We're actually gonna break another rule here and that is we're gonna glue this right on this surface here. Um, this has varnish on it right now, so that will keep it from sticking. So we'll get this clamped and we'll flip it up and wipe that down before we're completely done with the period. All right, and I'm gonna actually put the glue on the herringbone pieces since they're the smaller of the two and make sure I get complete coverage there. Remember, once you start gluing, you have 10 minutes of open time between the time you start gluing and the time this all has to be in the clamps or the glue will start to set up.
Okay, I'm gonna get my pieces close. We'll start the bar clamps and then we'll adjust it with the straight edge in a second. Get a little bit of clamping pressure on there to start it. And you can see right away it's starting to, to slide this way and that. I think I'm gonna do this with just one bar clamp on it. So right there, we want these to line up. Mostly, I'm not worried about the cherry stock as much as I am about the herringbone because we want these to be consistent from one side to the next. Come on, you snicker. See, it's already wanting to glue. These are end joints, so they might take just a little bit extra glue. Since look at that. It's already absorbing the glue. It's already starting to stick. I'll put a little bit of extra glue on there. Yeah, you can see that it's absorbed into that grain very quickly. The glue actually serves as a lubricant until it dries and helps us slide it along. and get these some extra glue too. So you can really see the difference between an end joint glue, end joint glue up and an edge joint glue up, just in how it's absorbing all that glue right there. So we definitely want it enough that it's gonna get into that grain Did I just put that sideways? You guys didn't even say anything. What's wrong with you? All right. Let's try that again. Also make sure that your clamping feet are about the same distance apart. If they're diagonal, then strange things will happen. Like it will start to slide around like so. edge lined up. I'm also going to push down. I'm going to check this again after I tighten it because even with this clamping pressure it's going to want to slide around some more. The other thing we want to be careful is when we tighten it, we don't want it to flop up like this. So I'm going to be really careful with my clamping pressure. If it looks like it wants to do that, I might just clamp it down to the bench to prevent it from doing that. But it looks like so far it's going to behave. Okay, and I can tell I have good square joints if I can lift up on that whole assembly and it doesn't buckle under pressure. That's just a tiny bit off there. That's so close, I just, at this point, I'm gonna make the choice just to leave that. Okay, one more thing I wanna do is I do wanna wipe up those glue blobs before they dry. It just makes it easier on the planer. So at this point, we're just gonna let this dry and we'll come back tomorrow after 24 hours and we'll be ready to start surfacing this, surfacing this board down to four sides square. Right now, we're just watching glue dry. One more time, just watching glue dry. Watching the glue dry. There's the glue, just watching it dry. 